So now that we've removed the pump, we need to, dis to disassemble the whole thing. So you can put it on a bench and do it. Nine times out of 10 on site, there is no bench, no vice. So we'll show you two ways to do it, one in a vice and one without a vice. Okay, so now we've removed the pump from the pump body. We have here the piston exposed and we also have the foot valve section. So all of this needs to be removed to expose the parts to be repaired or replaced. With this piston exposed, because it's hard and chrome, what you don't want to do is, is hit it with anything sharp, drop it in the dirt, drop it on a rock, because if, if you impregnate or dent that, the simple fact is that it's become null and void, then you can't use it again. You can actually try and uh, remove the, the dent with a bit of wet and dry, but you've undermined the integrity of this particular item by damaging it. And you've got to remember too, this is a high pressure unit. So if, because it's high pressure, any dents or damage that you create on this piston is detrimental to the longevity of the pump itself and its operational procedure. So what you'll need if you're on site to perform this task is your C-section spanners for the filter and the castellated nut for the packings. You'll need two pairs of Stilsons. You will need a shifting wrench or adjustable wrench, a screwdriver, a large shifter, and the hammer, of course. So what we're looking to do is we need to take the torque off the piston or the packers themselves. Now you'll find that that could be tight. If it is tight, what you'll need to do is probably put a piece of tube on this to assist you in creating a better fulcrum to undo the castellated nut. So we loosen the castellated nut primarily to take the torque and the pinch off that piston. Now that we've done that, we've removed that. The other thing I suggest you do before you uh, dismantle too much is also undo this particular filter housing. So if you in, in, apply a little bit of snap torque, it'll come undone a lot easier. So just remember, if you take this castellated nut all the way out and you undo this, you could hit the piston with this. So it's important to keep the castellated nut there to protect the piston from any, da any damage that could be caused. So remember this knockdown section here, we grab the, a, soft, a soft tool, brass, we can use a brass drift, you can use the Stilsons to undo this. They've designed it so that you can undo it with a hammer, so we'll do that. Remember what I said, righty tighty, lefty loosey. So we'll undo this. And that exposes that nylon sealing ring and the precious ring land that I talked about that you can damage quite easily. So if you hit that, you'll damage that. You'll have to dress it to make sure that the O-ring goes in there. I suggest you protect it and make sure you don't, it doesn't sustain any damage whilst during the repair because if you damage that ring land, that will render this particular cylinder inoperable because it'll leak and cause you all sorts of grief. So remember the the foot valve is in the bottom, so that's your primary valve. So we need to get that valve out. Now, if you've had a lot of paint through this and it's done a fair bit of service, you'll find that that sometimes is difficult to get out. What you have to be conscious of, of is that you can't use spanners or tools in there because you could damage the threads. So ultimately what we do with our piece of timber we have for the pump, the foot valve itself needs to come out. Now there's three spaces in there and they're in there for a reason which will become obvious. So by hitting it on a piece of timber, I haven't damaged the face of that. That exposes a tungsten carbide seat. Now cleverly now what they do is they'll manufacture these with two seats, one, two. So the seating ring in the tungsten carbide seat is for this ball bearing. So the ball bearing seats in that tungsten carbide seat. 316 ball, tungsten carbide seat. Sacrificial, non-sacrificial. So what you're looking for in these seats is there's a taper on the seat, a cut that goes back at a 45 degree angle. So what you're looking for, any damage in that seat. And if it's concentric, 
and the tape is not damaged, it's still a good seat either way. So very clever technology, 316 ball, the cage that holds the ball in place. So all that does is stop the ball from traveling all the way up the barrel. And this is a standard kit. You can get a pressure loading kit, which has a spring in it that holds the ball on the seat for higher volume solid products. There's three spaces here, or shims. These are designed and you'll find if there's a lot of paint around them, they're a little bit difficult to separate. So you'll need to give them a good wash. But the three O-rings and seals, or shims, separate eventually. And these actually do two jobs. One is they ensure that there's sufficient pressure on the top of this to hold the seat down in place. But when we undid this, it was pointing out the front of the pump. If I forgot to put one of those shims in and, and it reassembled the pump, this suction pickup section would be pointing opposing. So it could be three o'clock instead of being at six o'clock. So the three shims are essential to ensure that the pump points and faces the right way. So the three shims sit on the top of that cage, not underneath. If you sit them underneath, it'll give the ball more travel. So if you have a high volume solid product, it'll cause cavitation. Cavitation means that the ball doesn't sit on the seat properly and hovers over the seat due primarily to the viscosity of the material that it's trying to pump. So the three shims, not on the bottom, not anywhere else, but on top, and make your suction section of the pump on your primary foot valve point at six o'clock, which is towards you. So what else are we looking for here? This is just a housing, nothing else, just a housing. So all we have to make sure is that it's clean, and I suggest you start reassembly after it's been cleaned, everything's smeared with Vaseline. On this cage, there's again, two, nile, uh, two Teflon O-rings. They seal this cage into the housing and onto the seat. This particular uh, O-ring here goes on the top of that seat, like so. And then the seat, or the cage, I'm sorry, sits on the seat and seals. So inside this chamber, it looks like that. So there's your stack up and rack. So you can see there's a taper on the seat. That's where that O-ring sits. There's a larger face on the bottom of the cage. That sits on that O-ring. Another ceiling ring, another ceiling ring, and the three shims. So that's your foot valve. So what are we looking for with the foot valve? We inspect the ball for any damage, dents, scars, and so forth. By the eye, it looks quite good. So to test that, what I do is, I sit that back in the cage itself or the housing, and I'll put the cage back in without the shims. And then what I suggest to do is push it all the way home, and it'll go down and sit on the seat. Now just tip some solvent in there and hold that nice and still and see if the solvent leaks out here. So if the ball has been compromised, the fluid will leak out of here. If the ball hasn't been compromised, it will maintain a seal and there'll be no fluid exit there. So that's a foot valve, primary foot valve. This here is your cylinder. So what you're looking for in the cylinder is to ensure there's no scouring up in the cylinder wall because this is what we call static packings and moving packings. So that means that the top st stack of packings remain in the one position, whereas the bottom packings, which are attached to the piston, they move in and out the cylinder. That's what causes wear eventually on the cylinder wall. So what you're looking for in the cylinder wall is once we remove the piston, we're looking for scouring, and the scouring will be in a vertical sequence where it's carried a piece of contamination up through the cylinder wall if the pumps manage to pick a piece of contamination up. And also too, if you're using high wear products, as I mentioned before, vinyl esters, calcium silicates, 
uh, vacaceous iron oxides, they'll tend to scour the cylinder wall. So how do I get that piston out of there? Well, remember what I said, we've reduced the torque on this particular piston by reducing uh, the, the torque on the castellated nut. So now that we've re reduced any pinch that the packings might have on that, we can remove the piston. Now, because it's hard and chrome, what you won't do is bash it with a hammer. That's a soft hammer, a brass hammer, that's fine. But also too, you've got to remember that if I hit that, I could damage the edge of that and it won't, the collets won't fit on there. So what's the best way to get that out? Well, there's two ways you can do it. One is you can turn the whole thing upside down and hit it on a piece of timber or just push on the pump and it'll slide out. Quite tight, so tap, tap, tap. And that exposes the bottom of the piston. So can I get the piston out now? No, I can't. It's still a little bit awkward. So what would I do to get the piston on that last section out of the cylinder wall? Would I hit it with the hammer? Probably not. You still need something soft. So because we're on site and we don't have a beautiful dr brass drift to put in there, you can use the end of the screwdriver and it's not going to take a lot to get that out of there. So because I don't have all the tools under the sun at my dis availability, that's all it takes. Now, you've just removed the piston from the cylinder itself. 